morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Napoleon Total back again with some Shogun 2 Fold of Samurai. Last turn we destroyed, um, uh, Sue, Sally out by the enemy. And we're obviously gonna occupy the problems because, oh, we actually know, we destroyed the enemy Sally out and we captured the castle. Now we're just gonna take the castle, um, and yes. I think if I'm correct, the enemy sallied out and then we just destroyed them and then because they took so, so heavy losses, we just took the settlement. But, um, off the bat, we're just gonna upgrade, um, our general, and we're gonna do side rule for Rolf, because that, um, minuses the upkeep for our army, so that's wonderful. Elsewhere, the War of the British is still going on. Um, I decided to declare war on the Mikasa and then send an army to invade. Um, the enemy does have a massive army, con consisting of a lot of, um, this infantry, uh, sorry, this cavalry, um, off the bat, they're pretty not ter they're pretty terrifying, so yes. But I always have a way to deal with cavalry spams. Our bombardment failed to do any damage, but that's fine. Elsewhere, I'm still moving my troops down south. And with the new railroads, it's getting more and more simpler. So that's a good thing. Uh, two, three more lifeguards join the fray, and they're not going to be... There, if the enemy sallies out, but when the enemy sallies out, it's gonna be a wonderful show. So yes, we're gonna continue. As you can see in Tango, I, which I recently just took, I do have an army. But as of right now, um, the Yodo, who are fighting the United Kingdom, uh, or the British Empire, um, I decided we're custom alliance, which is satisfactory. I, a trade agreement that is also satisfactory, but as of right now, I want a trade agreement and some military axes. Uh, I'm gonna offer 10 for 20 and a deal is satisfactory But however they decide to up the game by asking for indefinite and they just are like yep, we agree uh, I demanded for some payment, but they're like nope uh, We are not interested to give you any money after you just literally asked us for indefinite um, Military access, so that's very interesting. This does mean that I have literally um, all rights to march through their lands and because they are literally what is separating my two armies from marching to uh, the UK's provinces, we are just going to invade through their territory. Also gives me a good reason to why I'm moving a lot of spies. Uh, in this mod, for some reason, um, I kind of feel like um, spies, when they are spotted on enemy, uh, well, I should say foreign terrain, it makes the people unhappy. <clears throat> so that's a problem. Um, once again, I do have uh, army... Um, I have an agent, Boris. Yes, this guy has been long, a long time. And he is just going to wound another enemy, so that's wonderful. Um, Boris has been very helpful throughout my entire campaign. And we're just going to continue to march on. Uh, the army in Tango, not to be confused with Tango in Africa, um, is just going to be marching on to um, the enemy fortress, but as of right now, we're not doing that because we need to re uh, replenish. Everything else is wonderful. Now we are doing armored and iron steamers, which is a good step for ironclads. Unfortunately, um, I do not think we have too much naval battles as of right now. We do not have a single naval battle as of right now. But yes, that is wonderful. The British um, appear with this massive army. And the enemy don't, doesn't do anything, which is weird. Um, because I am besieging their settlement with two, uh, essentially one full stack and another... Um, half stack, but uh, it is a smart idea not to do anything, but that makes them very acceptable to auto resolve. But we are just going to continue the siege because you you have to remember, guys. Um, if you put the enemy in siege mode, they will start taking losses, and once they've taken more than enough losses, they will start uh, taking. Uh, you can just it makes them very acceptable to auto resolve. As of right now, uh, there are two British armies in the field, three if you count that uh, many one stack, but as of right now, I'm not focused on that because I'm just trying to get more uh, units off the bat and we are just trying to prepare to move to take the new settlement. But as of right now, I'm just seeing what units can be moved, but um, I decided to move a pretty good chunk of my army with my advisor, of course. Um, And I decided to move on to Tamaji. And obviously it is a, a assaultable battle, but we're not going to assault because I'm really trying to get a response from the British. Um, I do not, I do not seriously believe that the British only have two armies in the field. That is literally, 
Um, actually, not even two. They only have one full stack army, one destroyed army, and one army that has been held up in the fortress. I'm seriously considering that the British might have a third army, a full stack army that I, I just do not see. Um, so I'm really waiting for the enemy to essentially come and attack me. Which, off the bat, the most thing, the most important thing that I need as of right now is to defeat the, the to decisively defeat the British army in the field. If that occurs, then we are going to be having a very good day for our campaign. As you can see, uh, the British army has actually two stacks. Um, more troops have been moved to the second stack, which is down south. Um, but um, there is no reinforcements for T Tajima, so that is very interesting. Uh, we are to do a research of a te military te technology in 20 turns, which is, um, I have to check my um, research to see if that is possible. And after checking my research, that is 100% possible, because we're getting ironclads. Not that I will be using ironclads way too much in this campaign, because uh, most of my enemies are land. And the only enemy that is via sea is uh, France, but we are not looking at France right now. The British Army has this massive stack in uh, the southern province. I'm trying to get as many armies to the field as I possibly can. Uh, Ralph is pretty much hated by my uh, by everyone. He has a literally minus one public order if he is there, which you can see right now. Um, minus one happenings for modernization. Obviously, that is considering if everyone is modernized, which they probably are not. So yes, I did a mistake right there, and I thought I was moving the entire army, but I just realized I just moved Ralph. So that's unfortunate. I'm gonna give him the cavalry, but um, the rest of the army is just gonna march on. Um, the enemy is still being held up. Well, my enemies are a lot, as, as a matter of fact, so I have to be specific now. Um, my main enemy on the land, besides the British, is uh, held up in Inkawa, and they're not doing much. My Geisha has leveled up, so we're gonna do that. And we're just gonna keep leveling them up. I haven't been paying attention to them at, at, at all. And yeah, but they're, then again, they're not that useful. Um, so that's interesting. I'm gonna send them elsewhere to like essentially go around and uh, make my population happy. Um, to be exact, it's more like my making my nobles happy, but yes. Is there anything else I wanna do? I have to exempt some province from taxes. A lot what I find about in Shogun 2 is that there are three types of provinces. The provinces that hate you no matter what you do, the provinces that love you, that love you no matter what you do, and the third type is the in-between. And for me as of right now, I'm just trying to get the in-betweens. Um, the problem is that don't care unless you essentially make them happy. The British destroy another Yodo army in the field, but um, because they're literally at this river choke point, they cannot come and attack me, so that is 100% wonderful. Uh, Tajima is still being sieged out. Um, I'm scouting to see if there's another British army in the field, but as of right now, the only British armies in the field that I see is this one, and another one down south. The enemy is wounded, and yes, this army is without a general. And the other army is in held up in uh, Kawachi, so that's interesting. Um, yes, so we're gonna prepare to assault Kawachi. Elsewhere in Mikawa, the enemy is not coming out to attack us, which means we are, um, we are gonna come continue bombard them and have them take attrition. But yes, everything else is fine, I think. I'm gonna have my um, military advisors strength troops, which is once again what military advisors are for, and we're just gonna continue on a lot of busy stuff, not a lot of battles because all hell is breaking through with us. Um, essentially, we are at war with the British, a powerful empire, and um, as you can, we'll see later on, um, almost every Japanese faction that we will know. So we're gonna end the turn. And Tabama, Tabama is being held by the Yodo, so that's going to be problematic because they're within. They're going to be um, in my way, essentially. Um, the British, they literally have a lot of generals, but their troops are not with their generals, so that's interesting. And to make it worse, the Northern Alliance declares war on me, so that's a massive problem. Uh, it's summer now, and a son is born, blah blah blah, stuff like that, but. Um, the Northern Alliance is at war with me, 
and looking at my sons, I have a lot, um, just realizing. Uh, but now the border is very, um, very problematic. Because they declared war on me, I was literally afraid that they're just gonna come across the border and sweep into my lands. That's why you see me just hurriedly op uh, building as many colonial line infantry. The other problems, uh, uh, the Izu originally Izu problems couldn't do that because um, they don't have a barracks. And to make it worse, I'm just producing troops everywhere because I have a tr railroad. I can easily transport th those these troops north, and that is what we need. Um, as of right now, um, we have to end the siege of Mikawa as soon as possible. And because we have been essentially starving them out, I'm gonna auto resolve. As as a matter of fact, not right now, but elsewhere. Um, yeah, we need to build train stations everywhere because um, the, essentially the Northern Alliance is at war with us and now we are fighting a two-front war. Um, yes, the British have a lot of very elite regulars in this army, especially a lot of guns, howitzers, mortars, and elite infantry, but not as much as the second army that we will eventually see. This army, we're just going to continue the siege. Um, Everywhere around the field, we are continuing siege, but now we have more troops just feeding into this uh, essentially a meat grinder. I'm gonna exempt this province from taxes for obvious reasons because they probably um, don't want to be taxed, and we're gonna move into Jima and we're gonna auto resolve this battle with those those troops. Um, that is one that is interesting. I order a night attack, but they're unhappy, so I uh, so I decide to save it and it's still auto resolve. It is a uh, Pretty interesting sight because we're taking a lot less casualties and we capture a mortar team We've taken 505 while well, they've lost pretty much a lot. So yes, we're gonna uh, Build stuff back up after we destroyed them obviously and we're just gonna continue down south But we need to have our army replenished first and then we can move looking on the map the British have a lot more provinces one island and Yes, yeah, so that's interesting um, In the north um, once again, we have the border um, everything is doing to its best. I'm gonna be building stables and that is gonna be very important because I need cavalry. At least cavalry that can actually do damage instead of just charging down the enemy. And so yes, you can see, as you guys can see, we have this massive rail race stretching from north to south. And yes, once again I am recruiting a lot more units to fund, um, to literally it. stop the northern alliance at this, at this point. Um, if it's possible, I will decide to attack eventually. The British army is now sieging Setsu, and I was hoping that the British uh, destroy or take Setsu so I can attack them. But I don't think it's going to be that simple. The Yodo, I don't know what they're doing. I, I know they have a massive army, but they're just not doing anything. <sighs> okay, the enemy decides to come out, and because I'm out of... I'm more worried about um, taking... I'm not interested in fighting this battle, so I decide to auto resolve with the balance bar such so in my favor. I decide to auto resolve, and we've lost 300 out of a lot. Um, they've lost their entire garrison, and we've just taken the place, which is why I decide to auto resolve because I am I cannot guarantee myself that I will kill every single person, so I decide to auto resolve. Which, if you think about it, it helps my, my situation because now we are fighting the north, and I need troops in on the northern on the northern border. Wow, speaking is a little bit hard today. Um, <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so deciding to recruit as many units, I decided to go for some marines because marines are what we need. Um, it's not it, but yes. What else is going on? I decided to have all these troops go on to, um, essentially on to the trains, and we're just gonna go and do stuff. And so, yes. Um, I have a navy right here, and I decided, you know what, I, there's not much for the navy except for just scout out the place and stuff like that, so yes. Um, I decided to do that. Public order is doing pretty fine, stuff like that. Um, I don't know what to really do.
Um, yeah, stuff like that. Um, nothing much really to do except for just essentially pro province management. Um, deciding to move an army eventually. Yes, I actually moved this army as of right now. I'm gonna accept it from taxes, and we're just gonna continue to move down south to where um, Harma, Harima, I think. Um, once again, I don't know Japanese provinces that well. I know a lot of European stuff, but that is not very helpful unless we're talking about the, the units. So yes, um, we're sieging out Kawachi, which is great. But uh, Kawa is gonna be rebuilt, and I'm gonna send this massive army back to essentially uh, the north, where where it originally came from. So that's interesting. I also have this army for essentially border guards. And I decided not to send that army back, the um, army with mostly marines and some uh, cavalry. And the reason is simply because I do, I really need to make a land contact somewhere. After it uh, vet, um, replenishes itself, we're just gonna do stuff. So yes. Elsewhere, um, on the next turn, Otto has been discovered, so no surprise. Um, Otto is this, um, my, one of my agents. Um, the British are not going to come out of Kawashi, which is fine, because all I need is the enemy army to start taking attrition, and because they have a pretty good army in there, um, I'm actually afraid of engaging it head-on, especially in a dugout fortified position called a uh, castle. I'm not going to be that stupid to essentially assault a castle held by British regulars. If there is one thing that I learn about history is that do not fight British regulars on the battlefield. That is not of your choosing. Um, yes. I'm gonna move this army north, like I've been saying. And as you can see, the railroads are just moving, 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 and moving. Thankfully for this army, um, all these units are just gonna be coming to north. I should have grouped him with this army, but yes, I decided to go for one more time, and we're just gonna go north. North, north, north is the question that we have to do. Uh, going north is some of the most important things that I have to do, because going north is actually moving north. Um, another thing that I find that is very interesting in this scenario is the fact that um, railroads help you a lot. So that's a very good situation for me. In this scenario we are essentially um, going to be rushing more troops than probably the northern lines by before they even realize it, which is wonderful. Um, especially, especially, this is especially what the Prussians did to um, the French. And it is because the northern lines declared war on me I have the right to essentially invade them and go ahead and just take over stuff without uh, well suffering the repercussions. Is that even need to be said? Um, in Hormina, there is only a British army that is one dude, and it is literally the general. So that's in interesting. Um, anything else is pretty nonchalant. Um, the British army decides to come out of the fortress and decides to attack me, which is something I really am interested for because it is a battlefield of my choosing. As you can see on the battlefield, we have these marines followed up by colonial infantry. One army, remember guys, this is the army that is as of, as of right now reinforcing. And this army is pretty... yes. As you can see, my other armies are just... Uh, going onto the field, and yes, my cavalry, and we're just gonna do stuff. Uh, my general is with this cavalry. As a matter of fact, the general that I'm talking about is Wolf. Um, he has been a very great help throughout my campaign. As a matter of fact, he's Imperial Kin, which just makes him even better. But he's gonna meet up with my general that has been fighting ever since we've uh, arrived, and that general is Gunter. Gunter in this uh, Shaco, Shaco, um, and his white um, facings are pretty much um, one is pretty much one of my best generals as of this time. He actually, um, I was he was the one that I wanted to adopt. It. He was the one that I wanted to adopt at the beginning of my campaign. But speaking of the adoption, um, because he, well, the reason why I wanted to adopt him is was because he was a very good general, um, and. Uh, I think I value him more than my own son, which is um, Ralph. Elsewhere, uh, the entire army is getting ready to essentially face the enemy. Um, because the enemy is attacking us, I'm deciding to fight the battle on my own terms, which is let them come to us and then we hit them with everything we got. That is essentially what I'm going to be doing this entire battle, and hopefully it works. 
As a matter of fact, no, I think it will work. And the reason is simple. The British have less troops than I do, and that makes our situation less precarious. Not that I will even be fearing battle, but like, um, in a field battle, I think I have the upper hand, no matter what army that comes against me. If I'm assaulting a place, I'll consider a lot of things before I order, order, order the assault, but if I'm defending, I won't even hesitate. As of the enemy army, we have these lifeguards, and uh, right here in the front we have some, essentially, riflemen. Um, not quite sure what type of rifles the, these are, but they look pretty elite. For those that w are wondering how the heck do I know they're riflemen, um, it is simple. In the British Army, if you wear red, you're the infantry. Well, to be specific, you're a type of infantry. If you were green, you are definitely 100% a rifleman or a skirmisher. Some skirmishers wear r red, I know that. But anyway, um, in, uh, in front of these we have some Highland Foot. Um, I'm forgetting the actual unit of this regiment, but um, stuff like that. In front of them we have our sepoys, uh, not our sepoys, the enemy sepoys. Um, Indian troops, uh, we have some colonial line infantry for the British. Um, looking pretty dang similar to the Americans, except for the only difference is obviously the red scarlet uniforms. As I said, obviously the red scarlet uniforms were adopted by the British Empire because literally it was the cheapest die. Um, yes, our army is going to be moving forward because the enemy is going to be coming straight at us. Uh, the, most of the enemy army, despite what I've been, what, what is being seen on screen, is mostly militia, which are once again uh, a lot in number, but they have terrible morale. So yes, um, the enemy lifeguards, which is one of their best cavalry that they will ever deploy on the battlefield, uh, better than any cavalry I have is gonna get shot to pieces by my guys because they are doing literally charge of the heavy brigade. Literally, um, this is not how you use cavalry. You, they will literally get shot up. But surprisingly, the, the enemy still charges on, so that's impressive. Until they're all dead, of course. So, yeah. Um, looking at the casualties list, um, essentially the entire 53 unit of lifeguards are shot away. Uh, yes, very. those heavy breastplates will not be doing anything against them. As a matter of fact, for those that are interesting, um, uh, the French did some testing, uh, actually Napoleon himself did some testing on breastplates, and for those that are interested what breastplates are, are, is this essentially this piece of armor that is supposed to protect the rider in case of a sword slash, a gunshot, or something like that. It was turned out that pistols could, uh, theoretically, be stopped by a breastplate, but and swords, of course, too. Um, although it will definitely more than definitely knock the rider off the horse, which is a problem. The enemy is uh, attacking with their militia in front. Not a bad strategy. Um, this Highland Foot is coming along with them. And uh, if there is one unit in the British Army that I fear the most is the is the Highlanders. And yes, um, the Highlanders, the Grenadier Guards, the Coldstream Guards, the Highland the Highland Guards. The Welsh Guards, the Irish Guards, yeah, I fear them the most. But, um, in particular, the Highlanders. Um, behind them we have the Sepoys. Um, actually no, in front of them we have the Sepoys. Um, so yes. I'm gonna move my entire army back, and that is because I have these wonderful cannon emplacements setting up. However, for this battle, for some reason, um, our cannons are firing duds. As you can see right now. The one that just fired was a dud, so it didn't go off. As well as much as I wanted. Demi is going to be performing uh, essentially a suicidal charge. Is coming across us like nothing's happening. And we're just going to open fire with everything we essentially got. Um, I do not know what the enemy was thinking because now they're essentially what you're seeing on the screen is the enemy's artillery is going to be charging straight towards us. Um. I have to give the AI props um, for doing this. Yes, a very nice idea. Uh, sending a 12 pounder straight towards me is a great idea. Not that it's gonna get shot. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> very nice, uh, very nice job, AI. Um, you you done it. Um, and not only are they going to do it once, they're going to do it twice. To a very devastating effect. They're actually going to charge in, which the second the one of the horses get bayoneted, all of the horses die, and yes, that is um, pretty unfortunate. Although that means we, we will not be capturing any guns. 
So that's gonna be a problem. The British decide to continue their advance. I do not know what the heck the British are thinking. They're coming in essentially with us and rollers. And remember what I said about the Highlanders being... Uh, I'm Of the entire British army, I'm most afraid of the Highlanders. And the reason is because um, they will not break. Yes. Um, the most terrifying unit is not a unit that is doing very well. The most terrifying unit is the unit that does not break until it gets shot to pieces. As you can see right there, there was a little um, bug. Actually, no, there was a little stutter. And that happens when there's a lot of units on the battlefield. Not so much the British Empire, but a lot for me. So, yes. Uh, with the Highlanders retreating, the entire army decides to quit. And, yes. Um, if I were them, I will actually... Um, continue to fight on because yeah if the second they retreat they're going to be chased by my cavalry but no some the units decide to come back to the battlefield um it is militia so it's nothing scary but the second um my sharks my shots start coming in they decide to retreat but you have to give props to the guy who's leading them this this englishman this um this british officer who's lead, leading them it looks pretty um neat however as as yeah, everyone is just recruiting at this point, and we have essentially taken the field. We are victorious. The end results have come in, and we only lost 149. Um, the enemy army was actually half the size of mine, which is makes it really questionable why they held out. Uh, they could have sent an another British army to reinforce this army, but then like, once again, they're. The British army itself is actually sieging a Yodo province, so that's going to be interesting. The Yodo decided to help me in their fight, uh, sieging Kawachi, and now uh, with Boris detected, um, I can only move my army into Har Harmina, and we're just going to take Harmina. Now Harmina, after taking Harmina, what it's going to do is split the British Empire in half. Split the British Colonial Empire in Japan in half, and that is very good for us. Um, so yes. Elsewhere, um, I do, I am checking what the heck is going on in Kawachi, and because the British only have essentially 39 guys left, we're gonna auto-resolve. And yes, we've taken Kawachi with the help of our allies, which are the Yodo. Uh, we are not officially in an alliance, but we have mutual hatred of the British, so we're gonna do that. We've only lost 3 guys, so that's wonderful. And our general has increased in rank. We're gonna peacefully occupy, and Gunter, yes, has increased in rank. Um, Gunter is probably my best general, and yes, um, I do like him very much. I'm gonna give him Night Battle and Vanguard with some Philadelphia, a Philadelphia pistol, I guess. Um, that's gonna help him with assassination because it's gonna help him with keeping assassins at bay. Elsewhere, I have this massive, well, not a massive, a half stack army in um, Mikawa. And I'm gonna, just gonna scout Odawara. And as you can see, on it says there's no units there. So I get a little bit cocky and decide, so you know what? Yeah, uh, it's now or never. The enemy is gonna have deploy at least an army there. So we're gonna attack that. Um, I cannot merge my army anymore because it is massive, it is full. So we're just gonna move via train to outer. Um, to um, this province. I was about to say out of Manchuria, but that isn't the case. We're gonna immediately lead the offensive because this army is 100% massive. Um, yes, I do not know why it keeps saying that this, the destination is out of Manchuria. That's kind of weird. Oh, we are not even connected by rail, as a matter of fact. We Heck, we are not even connected by sea. Well, we are connected by sea. It's just stuff. Um, another thing that is, has, been, has been or is going on is the fact that everything is getting, um, doing a very good job. So yes, um, in terms of the army strength, everything is going pretty dang well. Um, I am tr trying to produce stables because I need cavalry that can, act that can actually perform well on the battlefield. Um, the British have their lifeguards, I need to have car cavalry unit. And I'm just actually going to take a British general on 1v1. Uh, it is a highly 100% auto-resolvable auto resolvable, auto battle. And I don't think we're going to take a single casualty. 
Yep, we didn't take a single casualty. We wiped out a British general. That is not even British looking, so that's weird. Um, I guess what the British did was, because in Shogun 2 there are disloyal generals, and if that disloyalty flows above 100%, then the British are just gonna recruit them. So stuff like that. Anyway, I'm I'm actually pretty liking the progress of this war. Um, I am going deep into enemy territory, which means if the British has an army, it's gonna be a heated battle. Um, however, because of my entrance, I am essentially the new, essentially, um, head of the European powers. And a lot of Japanese powers are gonna, Japanese clans are gonna hate me because I'm getting a lot way too powerful. So, yes. Oh, we're gonna see what the British do. Uh, the British make some movement. They want a peace treaty, which is obviously a sign of weakness. Now I'm considering that just to take it over their entire province. But I do not I do not know why the British declare war only to have a peace treaty. But anyway, that is the video. Um, that is the, this that is this episode. So have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Now before you leave, I would like to thank you very much for watching this video. I would be honored if you could like and subscribe to the channel. Remember, more videos are coming out. So it is a good idea to click on that notification button. Anyways, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.